to explore the space of candidate programs if these tools are to be practical. The net result is that even though the community has developed reusable synthesis frameworks, each of these tools ends up reinventing the wheel to get the kind of strategic control that they need over the synthesis process. So today I'm going to introduce to you Metasketches. Metasketches are a framework for building synthesis tools. And the key idea is that the Metasketch abstraction allows tool builders to specify the search strategy and the optimality criteria as part of the problem definition, and then solve those problems using a reusable synthesizer. So our contributions are threefold. Firstly, I'll show you the Metasketch abstraction. This is an abstraction for synthesis that allows specifying the same kinds of complex hand-rolled strategies that people use in synthesis tools today, but in a generalizable way. I'll present to you Synapse, which is a Metasketch solver that solves Metasketches efficiently and in parallel. And finally, I'll show you results that show the Metasketches and Synapse can be used to develop effective synthesis tools in a variety of domains. And then at the end, I'll talk about cats, and that will make complete sense, I promise. But first, I want to show you some background to establish some common ground on synthesis. And in particular, I want to talk about syntax-guided synthesis. This is a flavor of program synthesis in which, in addition to providing a specification of what we want a program to do, users also provide a sketch. A sketch is a syntactic template. So the idea is that the sketch constrains the search space to a more manageable one for the synthesis. The sketch. What it has is choices and holes for the synthesizer to complete in a way that, that satisfies the specification. A space of candidate programs to explore. And then the job of the synthesizer is more simple. Well, that implements the semantics we're looking for. inductive synthesis, or stages. But you can think of it as first guess a candidate program. Here's the constant zero. And so then the synthesizer learns from its failure. It couldn't possibly contain a solution to the synthesis problem. Or we guess a correct solution, like the program that. The idea is conceptually quite straightforward. There are two challenges that. Yes, these candidate programs is critical to the tractability of the search. If we make bad guesses about which candidate programs to try, and so we'll be guessing for a very long time. It's easy to guess any solution, but in this shifts x left by 2. These are both correct about the quality of the solution we've discovered or how to find a better one. And now let's see how Metasketches face these two challenges. Rather than defining a single monolithic search space with a to define a fragmentation of the candidate space using a set of space, and the ordering of those fragments allows user control over how the synthesizer makes its guesses. Second, to deal with the optimality problem, Metasketches ask the cost of each program in the space. And secondly, for cheaper solutions in the search space. But to show you how the parts fit together, yes, I promise. If you haven't heard of superoptimization before, that's equivalent to the input, but is also optimal with respect to some criteria. So today we're going to use Metasketches to build a super optimizer. The first thing is going to be the structured candidate space. And like 
segmentation of the space of programs, and then to place an ordering on those fragments. The combination of the ordering and the fragmentation defines a search strategy for the synthesizer in which to search the space for potential solutions, rather than relying on the synthesizer. Optimizer, we're going to take the space of programs to be the set of is a pretty big space. In fact, it's countably infinite. And so to define a fragmentation program like. So we're going to have a subset S1 of all the and there are countably many of these fragments. So Metasketch asks you to write two things to define the fragment. In this example, we have one fragment for every length of program. The sketch S3. This is the set of all programs in SS. Holes to be filled by the synthesizer. In this particular example, filled with operations like addition and comparison, and there are arguments. It's that last tweak to make sure we're implementing SSA for. Space. And we have accountably many of them. And the idea is that the ordering defines a search strategy. It tells us this is going to be kind of the obvious ordering. Just we're going to order the And the combination of the fragmentation and the ordering has defined what is a pretty common search strategy for a, super, for a synthesizer. What it says is that to find a solution to the synthesis problem, we should first try to find a solution of length one, then try to find a solution of length two. Search strategy. But it's usually implemented as a hand rolled loop around some synthesis tool. It can be implemented neatly complex strategies. So now that we've seen these two parts, a countable set, and ordering on, those on that set. You can kind of imagine how we actually implement this. This is actually implemented as a generator. So the first invocation of the generator gives you the first sketch, the second gives you the second sketch, and so on and so forth. So we have one sketch for S1, one sketch for S2, and so on. So this is the structure. Before I move on to the cost function, look at the space of programs we're actually talking about here. mathematical functions they represent. And we look, for example, at the sketch that could be implemented in programs of length three. Semantic space, S2 is a subset of S3. And can become a program of length three that's equivalent by just adding dead code. But to the synthesizer, this represents semantic redundancy. There are multiple different programs in the search space that map to the same behavior. So exploring each of those programs separately would be a waste of synthesis effort. Metasketches allow us to eliminate some of this redundancy by what we call structure constraints. Structure constraints are assertions that are added to each sketch that remove candidate programs that we know to appear in some other sketch. So for example, let's look at the sketch S3 again from our super optimizer. We can rule out some of the redundancy in this program caused by dead code by asserting that each register in the program is read by some other line. And because any program containing dead code could be represented in a shorter sketch, we know that we haven't actually eliminated any behaviors here. We've just eliminated some redundancy. So adding these structure constraints to the sketches allows us to reduce some semantic redundancy to make the search more tractable. So this is the structured candidate space. The second part of a meta sketch is the cost function. And the cost function does exactly what you expect it to do. It just assigns a numeric cost to every program in the space. Now, the kinds of cost functions that Metasketches can use are quite general. So you can provide either a simple static cost function that just reasons about program syntax, say the length of a program, or the kinds of instructions it contains. But you can also provide some quite complex dynamic cost functions that reason about the kind of semantics of the program, execute the program inside the solver, and reason about its outputs. There's a couple of restrictions on how this works I'm not going to talk about, but we'll see some examples later on of complex cost functions. And in the paper, there are other interesting cost functions, like worst case execution time, that we can efficiently deal with. 
But for our super optimizer, we're going to be really, 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 really simple. We're going to define perhaps the simplest cost function you can think of, which is we're just going to say the cost of a program is the length of the program. In other words, the number of variables it's wearing SSA form. In the paper, we have a more sophisticated super optimizer, but this is going to be fine for our example. So this is the cost function. The final part of a meta sketch is a gradient function. And you can think of the gradient function as relating the other two parts of the meta sketch to each other. The gradient function takes as input a cost, and it returns the set of sketches in the meta sketch that may contain cheaper solutions than that cost. In other words, the gradient function is essentially over approximating the cost function on the set of sketches. For our super optimizer, because we defined a really simple cost function, we can also define a really simple gradient function. All the gradient function is going to do is take a cost and return the set of sketches that are shorter than that cost. Or to make that concrete, if we take as input the cost four, we get back the sketches S1, S2, and S3. These are the only sketches in this space that could possibly contain cheaper solutions. We haven't said whether they do or not, but they're the only ones that possibly could. Now it's important to note that for soundness, the only thing we rec it's always sound for the gradient function to return the entire space if no better bound is available. But for the synthesis process to terminate, we do require the gradient function to always return a finite set, even if the original space is infinite. Now this sounds like a problem. In practice, the meta sketches we wrote had this property automatically, and so it didn't turn out to be much of a deal, big of a deal for us. So these are the three parts of a meta sketch. Users provide a structured candidate space that tells the synthesizer how to explore the candidate programs. And users provide a cost function and a gradient function that tell us how to select the optimal solution. And we built a simple meta sketch today that does super optimization. So now that we've seen the parts of a meta sketch, I want to show you how we'll actually solve them. I want to present to you Synapse. Synapse is a solver for meta sketches. And the key idea of Synapse is that it combines two cooperating searches. At the top level, there's a global search. The global search is responsible for making sure that we reach the optimality criteria, that we find an optimal solution to the synthesis problem. The way that it does that is by offloading work, individual sketches from the meta sketch, to a collection of local searches. These local searches are running in parallel, and they each execute the CGIS algorithm that we saw at the start. But they're, implementing, they're executing a special new incremental form of CGIS that allows us to incorporate new constraints without having to restart their search. Now to see why that's important, and to see how, how Synapse exploits the information in a meta sketch, we're going to walk through a simple example. So here's a new meta sketch. This is not the super optimization example from before. But I'm going to use the numbers again to indicate ordering. So the very first thing we have to do is just start doing some work. So we're going to take the first three sketches and send them to the local searches. Now let's suppose that one of the local searches, say S2, discovers that that sketch is unsatisfiable. There's no solution to the sketch S2. It sends that information to the global search. There's not a lot we can actually do with this information at this point. So all we're going to do is send another sketch to that worker, the next sketch in the set, S4. Now let's suppose that later on, one of the local searches discovers that the sketch S3 is satisfiable. There is a program in that sketch that satisfies the spec. We'll call it P. Again, we're going to send that solution to the global search. Now the global search is going to broadcast this information to all of the local searches. And in particular, it's going to broadcast the cost of this solution. These local searches can now use this cost to prune their own search spaces. In particular, these sketches may contain solutions or programs that are more expensive than the cost we just found. Those programs are now irrelevant to the search because we already found a cheaper solution. Because these local searches are running an incremental form of CGIS, we can add this constraint to them without restarting the search. And those parts of the sketch now go away. So this allows us to prune the local searches. We can also prune the rest of the meta sketch, the things we haven't tried yet, by using the gradient function. The gradient function tells us which sketches in the meta sketch may contain cheaper solutions. In other words, which sketches we still have to look at. Any sketch not in this set doesn't contain cheaper solutions and is irrelevant to the search. So this is the idea of Synapse, by combining two cooperative searches running in parallel. This process continues until we've exhausted the entire search space, and at the end, what we get back is an optimal solution to the synthesis problem. I want to tell you briefly about how Synapse is actually implemented. So Synapse is implemented in Rosette. Rosette is an extension of Racket with support for symbolic reasoning and constraint solving. One of the interesting things about having these searches running in parallel is they can actually share more information than just solutions. So in Synapse, these, these local searches actually exchange counterexamples that they found in their CGIS loop. This allows them to skip calls to the verifier, and this saves us some search time. Finally, like any practical synthesis tool, we have to deal with timeouts. 
So these local, Synapse times out these local searches after 15 minutes and treats them as if they were unsatisfiable. Now this affects, obviously, the completeness and the optimality of the search. But in our experiments, we tried extending that timeout by an order of magnitude, and this made no difference to our results. So this is Synapse. Synapse is a Metasketch solver. Finally, I want to show you results that demonstrate that Synapse is an effective synthesis tool. So there's two questions we're going to answer for you today. The first question is whether Synapse is actually a practical approach to solving different kinds of synthesis problems. So we'll see two examples. And then secondly, we'll see whether Synapse can reason about complex dynamic cost functions, like I mentioned earlier. Now in the paper, there are more results about parallel speed up, about the effects of the optimizations I discussed, also about more kinds of problem domains and more kinds of cost functions. But we'll focus on these two questions today. So first, I want to show you a set of benchmarks called Parrot. The Parrot benchmarks are from approximate computing, which is a field of research in computer architecture. And here, the idea is to take as input a, a reference program, and then to automatically generate an approximation of that program that's no more than some bound wrong. So for example, find another program that's no more than 10% incorrect. Hopefully, that program is more efficient. So here on the x-axis, I'm showing you the seven different benchmarks from this suite. And the y-axis, I'm going to show you the solving time for Synapse. So Synapse is able to solve all seven of these benchmarks. Moreover, it finds the most efficient approximate program, at least according to our cost functions, for these programs within a given error bound. In contrast, we tried the same problems using Stoke and Sketch, which are two state-of-the-art synthesis tools. We found that neither tool was able to solve any of these benchmarks, even if we dispense with the efficiency requirement and just ask for any approximation to these programs that satisfies the bound. So Synapse is able to solve previously intractable synthesis problems. The second set of benchmarks I want to show you comes from the Syntax Guided Synthesis Competition. This is a competition that runs every year where a bunch of synthesis tools compete on a standard set of benchmarks. And I'm going to show you one set of benchmarks from that competition called ResEarch. Here the task is to synthesize a program that searches a list of a fixed length n. So here on the x-axis, I'm showing you the different benchmarks with n increasing from left to right. And on the y-axis, I'm showing you the solving time for Synapse again. Now in the recent competition, only one competing solver was able to solve all of these benchmarks. The rest couldn't make it all the way to the right-hand side. Synapse is also able to solve all of these benchmarks, but there's an important difference. If we take, for example, the last benchmark here, which is length 15, Synapse's solution to this problem is programs of 349 bytes long. The Syntax Guided Synthesis Solver's solution was over 7 megabytes. So Synapse is able to solve standard synthesis benchmarks with better solutions than existing tools. Finally, I want to show you that Synapse can reason about complex cost functions, dynamic cost functions that invoke the program. And to do this, I thought we would turn our attention to what I think is probably the hardest problem in computer science, recognizing cats. So in particular, we did something that you would never think to do with a program synthesizer. We trained a neural network that classifies cats versus non-cats. Now, why would we ever do this? Well, there are two reasons. The first reason is that the, com the cost function that we have to minimize is quite complex. It's the classification error over a training set. So the solver has to be able to reason about executions of the program and minimize that cost function. The second reason is that these, is that these programs are quite long, anywhere from 600 to 1,400 instructions, which is big by synthesis standards. And all I wanted to tell you about this is that it works. Uh, this is a really terrible idea, and you should never, ever use synthesis to train on a neural network. But if you won't really, really want to, Synapse is the tool for you. So let's wrap up. Today I've showed you Metasketches. Metasketches are an abstraction for program synthesis for expressing the complex search strategies that are necessary for a practical synthesis tool. We saw Synapse, which is a solver for Metasketches, that solves them efficiently and in parallel. And we saw results that show that Metasketches can be used to develop effective synthesis tools in a variety of domains. Synapse is open source, so I'd encourage you to download it and try it out. It's also artifact evaluated, so you can also download a virtual machine and play with that. With that, I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you. So how closely tied is this whole work to the fact that your, your search, the synthesis engine itself, is uh, somewhat SMT-based? Conceptually, it's not. You can imagine that the overall, the global search could delegate to solvers that don't do that, to do some other tactic. And I think then the question is how you decide whether to delegate to different kinds of search engines. So a lot of it is not tied so to that. Do you have others, other? We're going at the moment. Uh, 
Um, hi, that was a very nice talk, thank you. Um, so when you were describing um, the ordering on the search space, um, you, you had to give a procedure which gave the next element. So right. effectively, you're enforcing a total ordering. That's right. Um, but what about, well, have you come across any examples where it's natural to have a partial ordering and then, and then how does this affect your results? Yeah, we have. Actually, in the paper, there are several examples where there's kind of like two dimensions you want to explore. There's no obvious ordering between the two. Uh, in that case, it's kind of a question of coming up with a heuristic uh, mm -hmm. to sort of uh, dovetail that space, essentially. Uh, I don't know how else you would do it if you only had a partial order. We essentially defined our own order and it seemed to work. And this, is, this is a question that's been explored in several different papers about how to search that kind of space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, thank you. Actually, um, you showed some results from Saigis competition on one class of benchmarks. Have you yep. tried it in, on other class of benchmarks? And I was wondering, actually, is it the case that you have to provide different search ordering techniques for different classes of benchmarks, or yep. one technique actually works across no, all of them? No, it's different for different sets of benchmarks. So in the paper, there's also uh, the Hacker's Delight benchmarks, mm -hmm. uh, also some uh, compiler optimization benchmarks, all from the Saigis competition. Uh, most of those actually ended up using the same search order, but the array search program is a different one. And it's just a question of like how much information you have as a user. Uh, we think that the information you have to provide is pretty straightforward. It's the kind of thing you would probably implement in a handle tool anyway. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks. Sure.